on May 31st, 2018, one of the 20th century's greatest restaurateurs left the table for the last time. For over seven decades, Ella Brennan's unmistakable touch indelibly influenced and elevated American hospitality. Imagine, without Miss Ella, there would be no Bananas Foster. In the spring of 2015, Miss Ella welcomed us into her Garden District home for a conversation about her remarkable life. She sat elegantly in a comfortable wing-back chair. Just like the chair, the entire living room around her spoke volumes about the large, close-knit, multi-generational clan who lived out their colorful lives there. At the tender age of 18, Right out of high school, Ella went to work for her eldest brother, Owen, at his first business, the Old Absinthe Bar on Bourbon Street. As a child and into her adult years, wherever Owen was, Ella was never far behind. When she spoke of him, her eyes gleamed as she remembered the brother she clearly adored. He was a great guy. He was just, in my opinion, one of the extraordinary people, fabulous guy. And I could remember him as if he was standing right there and hearing him talk because uh, I followed him around as a little girl. He was 15 years older than I was. And I remember he would always take me everywhere. He'd go, we'd go in and pick up my father at the ferry where my father would come home from work. He'd take me with him. You know, he died in 1955. I would just making 30 when he died. I spent uh, the years from high school through that time working with him uh, because he was always interested in making sure I learned how to do something. He wanted the family to be in a business so we could take care of our mother and father in their late, late, late years. And uh, so he all of a sudden one day bought a restaurant. When we first started, it was just basically my daddy and me. And then Adelaide and John came. And Dick, by the time, now that Dick was young. So by the time he finished school and uh, went in the military and came home, there we were. That restaurant Owen bought in 1946 would eventually become known as Brennan's. While the original location was on Bourbon Street, it wasn't long before the Brennan family found another building on Royal Street, which remains home to Brennan's today. Ella recalls the work her family put into that new location before opening in 1956. The day we opened Brennan's on Royal Street, it was a smashing, huge success all over the country. It was extraordinary. It was so good looking. It was just a natural. I don't think of my father going down there and saying, this building, you don't have to do a lot to this building. Let's clean it up, get the nails out the walls, and let's get down to the basic, what's here, and just let the building speak for itself. Then they could decide what to do. We had this magnificent man, Charlie Gresham, who was a local designer, but had become a member of our family. We found him at the bar on Bourbon Street, and he was family ever <laughs> since then. And Charlie understood how to do it. And I think it became naturally great. The building was there, and they, what they did to it was extraordinary. With encouragement from her brother, Owen, Ella would go on to learn from the restaurant chef, Paul Blanger. Together, they created Brennan's signature dessert, the famous flaming Bananas Foster. My mother cooked bananas at home. Bananas were a big part of our daily staples in our house. She had many versions, but particularly one I remember is she would just saute the bananas in brown sugar. And I could just see us. We were standing in the kitchen in the restaurant. We were not behind the range or anything like that. We were standing right in, sort of in the middle of the kitchen. And we put this just together. And they decided to flame it with the, the banana liqueur and rum. And we served it over ice cream. And I remember them taking it to the waiter, taking it to the dining room, and serving it. And my brother Owen said to me later that day, why did you put the ice cream on it? And I said, 
I, I say to this day to him, okay, ice cream did pretty good, you know? And uh, so that was just a fun, fun time doing that. That was a typical day. A typical day for Ella included rubbing shoulders with some pretty famous people. For instance, New York Herald Tribune columnist Lucius Beebe was no stranger to Brennan's. Inadvertently, Lucius helped conceive the famous meal, Breakfast at Brennan's. Lucius Beebe was a yeah. frequent uh, visitor to New Orleans, and he frequently stayed at the apartment above the Absent House. And this is a very elegant, bon vivant type, smashing guy. And uh, somehow or other, we took to each other. And uh, I was a kid, and he was a much older man, but he couldn't have been nicer to me. Owen had said, we've got to do something to get this restaurant known and people coming here. And Mrs. Kyes had just written dinner at Antoine's. <laughs> and he said, what in the hell are we going to do? And so. Lucius started talking about, well, he was getting older, and he much preferred having a great meal in the middle of the day rather than late at night. And so we got talking about that and talking about that, and I went came up with the, the you know, dinner at Antoine's, breakfast at Brennan's. Of course, he said, Ella, do a menu. I spent a tremendous amount of time with Paul Bonger on Sunday mornings when the restaurant was closed. And I would go down, because Paul wanted to go in and fool with the stock pots and the da 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 And I was down there learning everything I could learn from Paul. And we would sit down and have these massive cups of coffee. Paul had some of these wonderful two old cookbooks, which he eventually gave to me. And I, had, I kept them close to me, because I was using them constantly. So Paul helped me with, he would go make one or two of these various dishes. And we'd say, oh, we can't do that, we can't do that, we can't do that. So we kept evolving what we could do. Ella Brennan's education continued evolving, too. Owen sent her across the United States and Europe to learn the restaurant business firsthand from the greats. When Ella moved to Commander's Palace in 1974, she took with her Owen's philosophy about the family business. Well, Owen always said... You want a restaurant that New Orleanians will be proud of. They will want to celebrate there, and they will entertain their guests there, or their visitors. You want a restaurant that is more than just the neighborhood restaurant. So when we got to Commanders, we knew what we had to do. Of course, up to that point, we didn't have anybody running the kitchen. These guys were running it, and I wasn't very happy with it, neither was anybody else. Days before Ella took over at Commander's, the popular food critic known as the Underground Gourmet published a scathing review of Commander's Palace in the New Orleans State's item. The restaurant received no stars, just a black dot. This symbol became a great motivator for Ella to turn the restaurant around. She immediately got to work, bringing in a number of now-famous American chefs beginning with Paul Prudhomme. What are we, what are we going to do after we'd gotten that black ball? We said, OK, we're, we're going to run the best restaurant we know how. And Paul, coming from the bayou, was doing his version of what they were doing down in the Cajun country. And we were sort of melding them together. And I kept saying, Paul, it's got to be a little bit lighter. It's got to be a little bit lighter. It's got to be a little bit lighter. Cajun food's a lot heavier. But basically, He's one of the most natural cooks you'll ever uh, find. It, it's, it's in him. I talk about magic in their hands. Mm -hmm. They either have it or they don't. And what do I mean by that? It's what they're going to put in. I mean, it's the seasoning. It's the selection of the dish to begin with, the raw material, where they're going to serve. And if they have this magic in their hands, they can take this wonderful dish and wow. When Paul Prudhomme left Commanders to open his own restaurant, Ella had to search for a great new talent, and she found it in Emeril Lagasse. I'll never forget when, when we were looking for Emeril because Paul wanted to leave. Kay had opened the little restaurant downtown, and he wanted to go get that going. And uh, so he said, I, 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 you got to find somebody. And I said, well, okay. So we went to work. And I really wanted a chef. I wanted somebody who could take that kitchen and really organize it better 
even than Paul could do even at, at that time. He mm -hmm. And so along came uh, this recommendation for Emerald. And uh, I told the man, no, 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 no. He's too young, doesn't have the right experience, and he's just too young, he's not gonna do it. <laughs> so the man said, I'm gonna bring him down. And I remember saying to the man, don't bring him down because I'm rejecting him now. Don't bring that young man down here and have me face to face have to reject this kid. He said, bring him down anyway. So he brought him down. And uh, that's how we got him. The kitchen at Commander's Palace became a great incubator for budding chefs. That's the place legendary Jamie Shannon honed his chops. Jamie literally grew up in our kitchen. He had gone to the CIA in New York. He was a little boy from New Jersey, the seashore in New Jersey. And uh, he went to uh, CIA and he asked the man, Tim Ryan, who's there today, who was newly running the school. And he said to him he wanted to go learn about American cuisine. And Tim said, we'll start in New Orleans. Well, when Jamie got here, he was working in the kitchen. Emerald took him on. And so Jamie, Jamie was there. And when Emerald got to, ready to leave, I'll never forget, we had four guys we could take as chef. Any one of them could have done the job. Emerald said, that's the one. That's the one. He was a kid, still a kid, you know. He eventually grew up, but it took a long, long time. Tragically, Jamie's time at Commander's came to an end all too soon when cancer claimed his young life. It was just heartbreaking uh, because he and T were on an airplane. They were traveling somewhere together. And when he was walking, he says, Jamie, you're, you're walking is getting worse and worse. You look like you're in very much in pain. They get in you know, all the airplane. Uh -huh. So they got off and they started talking. And he was telling them how he was feeling. And I said, man, you better go to the doctor today. I mean, let's get there. And that was when they found out. Yeah. But he, he was just one of the, 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 talk about magic in his hands. So how is it that Ella Brennan had such success in finding that magic and creating a culinary legacy? Well, I don't know how you do that. I mean, it just sort of, you, you go with your instincts. I mean, you go with what you feel, this person, how they talk to you about what they're doing, how they go fix something, and you see how they, how they handle themselves in a kitchen, and you talk to them about how they, how they want to run a kitchen, and you, you, you feel it, you really feel it in your gut. And you say, okay, this one. And uh, I realized what absolutely fantastic mentors I had. Absolutely fantastic. The cooks, and then there was uh, my older brother and sister, Adelaide and Owen. She mentored him, he mentored me. I mean, it was all each teaching each other. And I finally began to realize that's what it was all about. So when, in addition to running the restaurant, you could build these people and this team. And when they all realized how much they could do together, and help each other and make, we, well, we, act, we, we have a school. We've been teaching for years now. When they sit down, we tell them, where, we ask them where they want to go. And if they sound like they're interested in something and they have some ideas, we try to progress with that. The legendary Ella Brennan of Commander's Palace, who died Thursday, May 31st, 2018, at the age of 92.